what brought you to the conference? So both Partha and I are uh, Stanford alum that are also venture capitalists now and invest in the healthcare space. And so um, for, for both of us really trying to you know, stay engaged with the community, it's obviously a very uh, active and, and impact, emboldened community. And, and we're trying to figure out from an investor perspective and from a technologist perspective, um, you know, where there's there are places for investment and for growth into whether it's sensors, uh, data, or, or user sort of interface uh, companies. Are you finding things here that you may want to invest in in the future? Yeah, so we're seeing things, some things that we had seen before, um, groups that we've been watching for a while, and, uh, and others that are, you know, talking about new ideas that may not even be companies yet, but just concepts that, that at least to me seem interesting, and it's uh, piecing, you know, apart what a business looks like there, uh, but definitely, you know, pretty pretty uh, inspired by a lot of what's being discussed. Um, Nate Gross at Doximity, we actually uh, just invested in the company that he, he was describing today. Um, uh, so I, I represent Morgan Thaler Ventures and Lightstone Ventures, two firms in this space. Um, so Nate Gross was there, you know, uh, Health Tap with Ron Goodman. He's a he's a former classmate of mine from Stanford Business School and uh, someone that we've been watching as well, uh, and um, you know, a handful of others. But but I think it's been it's a good community. It's and the, there's a lot of good discussion going on. And then what are the new ideas that you've seen that aren't part of one of these old hat groups that look intriguing to you for the future? Well, you know, at this point, just really getting a survey. Uh, so we're a traditional uh, medical device healthcare investor, uh, have not been in the IT space or software space before, but uh, we understand there's such a, you know, act, so much activity going on with health IT right now. It's a it's a process personally of, of education for us. Uh, so just kind of surveying now. Anything that you saw that was brand new that really struck your interest? You know, and the name of the speaker escapes me, but the concept that was uh, discussed a little earlier today with the bedside sort of, sort of uh, iPad app to understand a patient's current um, uh, regimen of, of medicine, of, of therapeutics, of uh, you know current diagnoses for a family who's in the room with a patient to sort of self-educate, um, uh, ask questions of a physician or of a nurse or any provider that's coming into the room at the appropriate time and have something that, that all parties can look at uh, and understand together and then combining that with a social element, um, you know, allowing patients to pose questions real time, uh, you know, and overcoming the fact that, you know, one of the, the, the pain point he was describing was it was a hospital environment without Wi-Fi and uh, isolation felt by patients in kind of critical uh, points of care. So those concepts um, in some ways are not new. A lot of patients must have experienced that story that was told today. Um, and there are a lot of barriers to making something like that happen, but there's a lot of need and there's a lot of benefit that could come from something uh, like that being, being you know, developed and, and uh, being adopted, frankly, is, the, is, is one of the major hurdles. Well, thank you both. Is there anything in particular you're looking forward to? Well, I think, you know, for me, it's it's just uh, seeing the different things being proposed. But what I look for most is kind of the sustainable business models around it. So it's driving adoption, as Juan Pablo said, but also having uh, some of the main aspects of the healthcare system with uh, reimbursement, regulatory. I'd like to see those things kind of laid out and hashed out and actually having a business model in a system where, you know, payers and often government payers or large payers like Blue Crosses of the World are paying for medical services and products, transitioning that to patient pay, transitioning that to like, just hospital eating it because it's, it's better practice or whatever, better care for patients. I mean, it's that business model, the business model aspects as well as the structural and regulatory aspects of the industry that I would like to see pretty well addressed. I mean, I think there are a lot of innovative concepts. There's no end to those. Uh, but balancing that with the, I mean, that's what we look for as investors, as healthcare investors in particular. Excellent. Thank you guys very much. The last thing is, if you had a word of wisdom to a lot of the startups that you're seeing, as far as what makes them sellable, what would that word be? If you just one or two words. I'd say integrate. I mean, integrate the, the many different pieces of the puzzle that makes for a successful healthcare business. And, um, you know, I think innovate is a word that everybody talks about, and that's fundamental to what's being done. But integrate uh, the different aspects. I, I would say that would be the word I'd focus on. Thank you. Anything to add to that? I mean, I think very the word that came to mind was implement, but that's very similar in, this, in, in the same vein. It's, you know, put the pieces together, 
you know, pilot uh, some of the things that you're developing um, in, you know, a, a, a contained environment so that you can then tell the story of how it was used and how it was, um, you know, responded to by users. So.